Hi there, my name's Dean, I'm, and I'm from London, London, England, and I wanted to take this opportunity to, to discuss my experiences with um, narcissism. Um, a lot of people um, on this channel have spoken about, um, about having a narcissistic partner, which is, which is usually the story, but mine was, my, my story is a little bit different. My, my narcissist was actually someone who I... I felt was a a friend of mine, a long term friend, a friend who I believed to be a confidant, and it turns out I was wrong. Put it this way, they say that that um, never work with friends; it never ends well. Should have heeded the warning. But um, my friend, um, I met my friend all the way back in two thousand and five. Um, at football, it was from through a mutual friend, and it's like it's like we there was like a group, it was like there was like a group of them, and it's like it's like it's like he, he out of all the group, he was the key chap. He always always had that sort of banter, always like like he was always the prankster, always good for a laugh, and. But at the same time, he was kind of like the the leader of the group. He is like every, every every time he says something, everyone would stand to reason. Every time he had a plan, everyone would come, and I kind of admired that kind of quality because I never had that quality growing up because I didn't have the confidence to have that sort of quality growing up. But um, as years passed, um, it's like um, it started at football. Then we had days in. We've had nights out. We had days out. From computer computer games at his house to bowling to drinks at night that sort of thing. But also as years passed, I, I um, while I was either in at your at university, or in and out of work, he was solid in his job and he solid in his job and this job that he he um had for himself. Every time I came to his house, I always noticed that he had. The, the newest fashions. He had the newest tech. He had a car. He had dogs. He had had he had the coolest like parents. And so like, this is the kind of I just felt I again I admire him because this is the kind of like environments that I knew that that um someone could really grow from. And I've never had that growing up. I'm gonna be honest with you and. So I kind of admired it for that too. But as years passed, I was again I was in and out of work. Um, when I think it was in late twenty twenty eleven, he he um came to me asking me whether I'd be interested in um um joining security with him, because that was his job by the way. He was he was in security, and that's why he's able to afford all the stuff that he has. And um, it was like, I was intrigued because the money was definitely appealing. And it was like, um, at the same time, I wanted to do my own thing. And and, during, and, and um, I was in and out of jobs. I had endless interviews. They never got, went anywhere. And ultimately, I did get a job uh, late in 2011. It was... Um, it was I was working in a gadget shop, which was a pretty good, pretty good job. But that's not the point. Um, it, in twenty, it was in twenty twelve when um when I did actually decided to jump over by to join security, and it all started with a course which I passed. But then the situation happened where it was it was a, it was a situation happened. It was a criminal situation that happened, and things got held up and then I, then I got another job I did, I ended up getting a job working in a luggage store and which again was pretty cool but um as time passed um I came to realize that my my job was kind of I just felt I was being served with some requirements but it also did, it was late in 2014 when when he when my mate moved to a brand new company and they and what appealed to him, and because it was more close to close to home, 
it all worked, it was all it was perfect for him. And also during this time, um, he um, his boss, his new boss, asked him if there was any people who would be interested in in um, a new if any people who would be interested in joining too. They put my name up. And so they got in contact with me. Um, I met them. So I had to fill out a few forms. I got back to them, and that was it. I was in. Um, and, I, and I started in October, October twenty fourteen, and then and then I, I got into the job. I did a bit of training. I did the job, and you know, I'm not gonna say I was I was the best, but. And people make mistakes, and I did make mistakes. I, I I messed up, but nobody's perfect, and we're all human, right? So I had this position. I lost it. I ended up moving from place to place until I ended up landing at his at his at his site, and I ended up landing on his team where he was supervisor, and I was on uh, under him. And again, I wasn't perfect, and um. And there were times where I, I didn't do everything correctly. But again, I'm new to the job. Who, who's perfect? Who, who gets it right the first time around? Then, um... And there were times where I messed up and, and he, he had to... And he criticised me for it. And criticised me. Criticised me for it. And I put my hands up and maybe fair dues. It was, I need, didn't need to... To step up and, and be better, and which is what I resolved to do. But as time passed, um, as time passed, I came to realize that there, there was more to him than what I previously thought. That that um there was, that there was more to his character where he started. Acting out in a way which I didn't like. I'll give you an example. There was one time there was a leaving party, right? And he expected me to be at, uh, there at a particular time. And I was late because I wanted to get a haircut. Because I wanted to get a haircut because I wanted to look presentable for the party. And the moment he met me, he started turning on me, getting nasty, saying some, uh, slagging me off and saying some nasty things. Then he walks away, and then, and then it's like, and then it's like, I was there thinking, who who are you? Anyway, as time passed, um, things happened. Things happened, and but then, but then it, it was twenty sixteen where, where it was the start of things, where we we went on, on holidays twice that year first. First was in August, um, we went spent a day in Paris. And it was during this time again he was he started acting in a controlling way. And it was my idea for me, him and a friend other friend of ours to go to Paris and he was controlling the entire thing, even though it was my idea. And I didn't I didn't like that. And also, it was a case of um, I first of all, it was my idea to book, book book a day in Paris, but then I did that, and then, and then time passed, and then and then before we went, he started started speaking about how how um we could have made it a few more day, we could make it a couple of days, we could have stayed over, blah 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 blah, but I was there thinking, but then if this was the case, why don't you why don't you Bring this up before we went, um, before I sorry before I bought the tickets, which would have made a lot more sense. But yeah, he was kept harping on about it. But at the end of the day, it's too late because the tickets had already been booked. So there's nothing I can do. Anyway, we spent the the, the day in Paris. I thought it was it was, a, it was an amazing it was an amazing time, and it was the first time. And I believe it was, it was actually the first time I was out of the country. Uh, out of this country in in over twenty years, <laughs> believe it or not. But it was a good, it was an amazing experience, and it was a beautiful, it was a beautiful city. 
then believe it or not, it was it was like buses come two came at once. Me, him, and a couple of uh, of others who we worked with, who we all went to Madeira. Well, just before Christmas, two two of them are actually from Madeira, or, or have married family from Madeira. And again, during this time, it was, again, uh, it's an amazing place, a beautiful place, and and because. And to get from and we and we we had a car they they hired a car to take us all over the place because they didn't have like a frequent travel um like ske- schedule like they didn't have like a frequent bus route or train service so they had to hire hire a car to take us from A A to B but again during this time he was acting in a way where he started being all controlling and nasty and and manipulative and he just started to act in a way which I was, I, was just, I was just left thinking again who are you but anyway anyway we we had that and then it was 2017 where things changed as far as I was concerned because um because during this time, it, I think it was in, in the, the, the year 2015, 2016, where I felt that everything that I was doing wasn't quite, it didn't really work out for me. So I came up with a plan. I started, I, I embarked on a journey of personal development and it all started with, and and my way of doing it may be a little bit unorthodox because I, because I just felt that the people like Eva had the confidence and the ability to just get what they want, and some people, some 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 people don't. I'm I'm a fortune door number two, and so I came up with a plan to learn the skills to be able to to get to that place, and it. Started with YouTube videos, and it evolved from there. And it went it went towards books, audio books, courses, webinars, and the likes. But but on this journey of doing this, I spent more time doing that and spent less time with my friend. And he knew and he noticed that, and he was and was he happy about that? No, he wasn't. But. I didn't understand why, because at the end of the day, it was. I mean, it's not like he, it's not like he didn't have his own life to to live. It's not like he didn't have his own friends. He didn't have his own things to carry out. So I didn't see it as a big deal. But anyway, I um, anyway, this is what I decided to focus on. And for some reason, he was he was unhappy. He started making snide remarks about the fact that that I he I don't know he probably felt that I was abandoning him. I mean, the and then the remarks became more and more frequent until the point where um where it's like I decided that that I wanted to bring him into the fold as to what I'm doing with what I'm doing as to the reason why I have been so distant. So I told him about it and thinking because in the past he has he has been so supportive because situations have happened and he's supported me through it. So I thought he would support me through this as well. But was he supportive? No. Was it, but was he supportive? No, he wasn't. In fact, he when I told him about what I was doing, he found it stupid. He, in his these words, he said he was stupid, ridiculous, and it was never going to work. And since then, after that, after that, there he would embark on a campaign where not only would he continue to continue to remind me of this, but he would start becoming a lot more controlling. He would he would start doing things where he would um he would it's kind of like he was trying to to get my attention, but he was doing it in a way which was completely nasty. He would he would he would gaslight me. He would insult me salt me, put me down, he would, he would, he would commit to gaslighting actions, 
and the likes. I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, it was the beginning of 2017, after our, our holiday in Madeira, we had a conversation about, um, about where to go to next. And I was fixated in going to Spain. And I pinpointed where I wanted to go. I wanted to go to Barcelona. And, but he, he wasn't about that. He said he wasn't about going to Barcelona. He said he wanted to go to the Canary Islands or some, something like that. Anyway, we had this long drawn out conversation and we and it didn't go anywhere but he we, we vowed that we would have this conversation later but that conversation never happened because because of this situation where we ended up where things happened and where it's like he where we where things started falling apart anyway months later i go to i i decided i wanted to go to barcelona because um it was it was, it was june the beginning of the summer I was the warmth, the warmth in the air. The birds were singing, and I was, I was just feeling the vibe of wanting to go. I know for a while that he didn't want to go because he already told me that he didn't want to go. So I decided to book some tickets, and I I decided to go by myself. So I go by myself. Had with all the bells and whistles, has a, have an amazing time. And then I come back. Um, I come back afterwards, a few, a few days, um, about a week later, I, I come back to work. And he, he shows up, because um, my team was the, on the day shift, his team was on the night shift. So he, co- so he, com- he comes in, for, in um, before his night shift, he looks at me in a, with a screw face, and he's all, he's all snapping at me, uh, like shouting at me, all how happy me saying, oh, I can't believe you went to Barcelona without me. And then I made him aware that he had already told me that he never wanted to go to Barcelona in the first place. So, and which is why I told him. And then he responded with, I want to go everywhere. So now, here's the thing that I don't understand, right? Is that he was, he, what, months ago, months prior, New Year 2017, he told me he didn't want to go to Barcelona. He had no aspirations to go to Barcelona. But I go to Barcelona a few months later, and he already has already, and he already changed his mind. I don't even think about that. But um, one of the things that I that um I came to to discover about him, which which was um. The reason why we fell, why I fell apart, is he started becoming a lot more controlling. He would, he would commit to actions where he was, he he was trying to control how how I live my life. I'll give I'll give examples being, because um, I tend to work out at home. Um, I had a I had a coworker. He he um he wanted he spoke to me about the possibility of me working out in the gym with him and I said no because I was happy with the workouts I was in at home he was he would he would instigate himself and tell me oh but you're t- saying oh you're working out at home but it's not working because you, you look at you still you, you still out of shape <laughs> which is a nice thing for for friends to say, say to another one isn't it um other things including other things including um he would also embark on trying to undercut me in regards to this this personal development journey I've, I've been going on, making fun out of it. Like he was trying, like he, I felt he was trying to to discourage me from doing it, which 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 is surprising to me because for me for me I don't know about you, but when you're friends with someone, I would expect your friend. I would I would expect my friends if that if I'm doing something that was meant to be. Designed to be positive and good, and the, uh, for the great good, I expect my friends to be happy for me and support me and motivate me and drive me to make 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 the whole thing happen. I had this vision. I was hoping that, um, in fact, that I was hoping that this is something we could have done together. But, but I guess not. But I would say that the last straw for me was. What what was um 
what was um there's this one task I used to do what I did at work when I when I was there and it's like it was outside of the, of the task that I was expected to do it was part of the one one part of the job on in the site and and I was doing a task which was outside the box of what my tasks are expected of, to to be done but it led towards the time efficiency of the job it gave it it, it made sure but me doing it made sure that everyone got their task done a lot quicker. Which which is good. And I did this I did this I used this um little thing that I did on um with a few of my supervisors. I think there was five or six of them. And and no one had a problem with it. I I no one no one had a problem with it. I even got a few thank yous for it. My my supervisor at the time, um I actually saw a supervisor. No, it's a long story. My supervisor at the time I was having problems with because I felt that he was becoming a, a, a bit. Um, I felt that he was. He he is acting in a narcissistic way. I felt, felt that he was being a narcissistic bully too. But even he came to me and told me, "Wait to finger your feet. Wait to use some initiative." But my friend. Bear in mind that my friend wasn't wasn't one of the supervisors that I utilized this with. He had no connection with my super, my my team in any way, shape, or form. But yet, in his mind, he decided that because in his mind that he felt that my doing this task was wrong, that he felt that he needed to tell me about it. He needed to make a big issue over it. But at the end of the day, right, it had nothing to do with him. So. So the fact that he had no that he had very little respect for me to in any any stretch of the imagination stay in his lane or mind his own business, he wouldn't do that. He kept harping on and on and on about this whole this, this thing that I was doing. Despite the fact he it it had it had nothing to do with it. So anyway, I, I grew fed up by him keep kept doing it. So I, I so I took him outside one time and I issued him a warning not to do it again. Not only did he do it again, he did it again four days later. And it, this time he, he elevated it to the point where he pretty much embarrassed me in front of everyone. He embarrassed me in front of our, all of our co-workers who were there. He, he shouted at me in front of everyone, over, shouted at me in front of everyone, showed me up in front of everyone, and he storms out of the room like, like he's some sort of martyr. And... It was at that point where I, I, I had enough. So after that, I called time on our friendship. I, I spoke to him and told him, you know what, our friendship's up. And I walked out. He tried to come after me and, and, and speak to me and like try to, to talk, talk to me and resolve his issue. But, but that was it as far as I was concerned because it, it's like if he really wanted... If he, if he actually regarded our friendship a lot more, then he then he would have then he would have stopped doing it. But he he would have stopped doing what he did. But he did it anyway. And then after that, what happened after that was was that there was this there was this pattern that he, that was that was that he would embark on, where he was. Where he would, one minute he would say how sorry he is for what he did, and how it was a big misunderstanding, how it was a big mistake, how how we can sort this out, we can sort this through, and how we can, and this is a phrase I look back now, and I, and it just makes me sick to my stomach thinking about how we can fight for our friendship. But in the meantime, while he was talking about how we can fight for our friendship, he would continue to to um, come at me in front of everyone, whether that would be privately or privately or publicly, he would continue to insult me and put me down. So one minute he's telling me, oh, we can sort this out, we can fight this, we can, we, we can sort this out between us, we can fight for our friendship. Next minute he would insult me, throw, put a barrage of insults, 
making fun of me, pulling me down, saying how how um how much of a screw up I am, how how no girl will take me seriously, how, how I mean it was it was it was too much. And then and then twenty eighteen hit. Oh, you know. And then what happened was was that it was becoming too much. Not not just because of him, but it was also because of my supervisor, where I decided that enough was enough. And and initially, I was going to quit my job. I was going to resign and I was going to leave. Then I was thinking maybe I was a bit bit hasty. But then I saw this video, which changed everything. For, for me and it was it was probably one of the smartest videos I've ever seen and instead of asking and instead of resigning from my post I spoke to my security manager because I was, un, I was unhappy with the situation that was transpiring in, in the in the building and rest assured rest assured everyone knew about it my managers knew about it the building management knew about it <laughs> and even the higher ups knew about it and so, so ultimately, I spoke to my manager and I told him that I wanted to transfer out of the building because it was becoming too much and I just, I just couldn't handle all, all the, 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 the toxic environment that was it embarking on around there. And... Initially, my super, my 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 manager at the time wanted me to think about it, but I, I set, I had my mind set set up. I I made I had my mind made up. So we go into twenty eighteen, and he he was still doing doing all the all the nasty stuff, and and but but one day, one night I remember it was one night I think it was in February, and it was a snowy night, and. Uh, and I was on night shift, and my my mate was covering on my on, on my team that night, and he comes to me, like, appear, apparently appearing on the level, and he told me how he find he 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 found out, he 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 discovered that he I asked to leave the site, and he told he tries to tell me that I'm making a big mistake. Now I I know for a fact that that I I didn't buy what he he was I was, I didn't buy what he was selling, so I just totally rebuffed what he what he had to say, and this is this is this is the kicker. He told me that that after this he said because I wouldn't I wouldn't bow down to his request I should should reconsider my decision to leave. He wanted me to pay back the money that he. He paid for me in regards to my security job, like my security course. Despite the fact that every there was many occasions when I told him, they, when when he told me after I offered him to give him his money back, he would always say, "Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it." But all of a sudden, <laughs> but all of a sudden, now the funk has hit the fan, and all of a sudden is now giving my money back. Funny how that works, isn't it? Anyway, months passed. Anyway, I, I had I, I had to continue engaging in a situation where I was trying to do my job the best of my ability, but yet I had to encounter both my my mate and my supervisor who were who was treating me so horribly, and it's like I, it's like I had and and yeah, there were times where I succumbed to it and I and I made some tremendous and errors of judgment and that all that did was it just became further fodder for them to use against me to to put me down and then and then there's and obviously and, and, and also because of the situation that I met, I and that happened I ended up um I ended up getting hurt by my I ended up getting disciplined by my my bosses for the actions I, I committed to. 
and I and I put my uh, and I raised my hands and I accepted uh, I accepted the uh, consequences. Anyway, time's passed. Time passed, and I was still going through this whole situation. When one day, my my the the building manager spoke to me, and he told me there was this brand new site that was opening up soon, and I stepped up. I said, "I accept." And then he took, took gave me a few. Yeah, you know, he gave me some information about what the site was going to entail and what I was expected of me, and he he would let me know when 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 training is happening. Now, now, as far as my friend goes, he knew that his um his consistent um like trying to convince me that we could save our friendship, um, could uh, um. He wasn't working. So guess what happened? So, enter the flying monkeys. One which was, I felt was, I was disappointed by. Because, um. Because, um, he, because she was one of the cleaners there. Um, sweet old African woman. Who, we we gone up like a house on fire. Had a great rapport. Um, and we always, always, we always get, get along. Because one of the things that, things that we we have in common was the fact that we share the same birthday and we always had and we always uh, uh, and i always come in every year bringing some cake that's a that's a that's a shared shared occasion anyway she she jumped on the bandwagon and 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 spoke to me telling me how i how i should sort this out with my mate which i which i which i was absolutely dismissive of until and then when I spoke to her one time or, or one of the things that he, he did, which included sending me a nasty nasty text, she stopped she she stopped all, she just stops. She just didn't she didn't get she didn't get involved after that. Unfortunately there was another one where who got involved which was a super which was a security officer that was on his team and he he too was coming to me telling me how I should give my give my mate a chance, and even and then I spoke to him, told him about the situation and and, and the things that he was doing, and lo and behold, next thing I would know was was that the next time I would see my supervisor, but the next time I would see my mate, everything that I, I I told to to that security officer who was who was trying to convince me to sort this out with him. Lead back to my mate. And it was at this point I just realized that I couldn't be trusted. Now it's at, it at this point I realized that that I couldn't trust anyone there. Um. Especially him. Um. But anyway, I had to go. I had to deal with this whole situation up until it was late August twenty eighteen when um when I went on holiday for a week because it was it was my birthday, so I wanted to, so I decided to take, take the entire week off that week. And there was at this time where I got contact from my uh from my um uh, and I got I received contact from my from my manager. Telling me, well, calling me in to, to um, do the training for the new site, which never happened, but cause um, it got things got held up. But anyway, I. Yeah, everything got held up. But then, I, then, it, then I got a second contact. So second contact after that. And and my supervisor told me that my my mate, out of the blue, was leaving. I was, um, I I never knew the circumstances why, but it just came out of the blue, just just out of nowhere. He decided to go back to his old old company, cause um, cause um, the company that we were with, we were with one company, and then it then it, it moved to another company, and then it moved to. And they moved to another company and he moved to another company again. And um and he went back to his old company out, out of blue and and 
about a week later, he was gone. Um, so that so in that situation that because he he was no longer there, but I still had to contend with my well my supervisor who who was also who was also becoming a, a problem. And then, and then September was an interesting month that month that year because um not only did not only did did training come up that year that month and I actually and I moved on to the new site. But one of our other colleagues moved moved on. That was on our team. He moved on too. So he, he lost two super. He say he lost two security officers on on his team. And um, so I moved on to the new. Uh, so I went for the training. I moved on to the new site, and and I have to say, moving on to the new site was amazing because because one of the biggest things that was that was the best part about it was that it was a one man site during the day it was it was um reception and during the night it was security and it was me and another guy um it was me and another guy um who rotated during um each week and it what I mean what, what I mean it was such a cool site because it was ecologically friendly meets technology, and the best part about it is the peace and quiet. The fact that I didn't have anyone sniffing my ass or getting getting involved in my business that was the best part about it. Unfortunately, I ended up losing this position for. Unfortunately. I ended up losing this position four months later, because um, because this is way I think I think it was to do to my to do to my timekeeping, and fair enough, that's that's how it goes. But during this time, two things happened. First things first, I started watching videos during um, whilst I was on the site. Um, previously, I was watching videos about. Toxic people, neg- negative people, toxic people, um, bullies, emotional vampires, and then and then we cl- then I accidentally traipsed into the world of narcissism. And once I started watching videos about narcissism, narcissism, everything clicked, and it it was like I felt that I felt that and not only did it click for me in regards to this situation with not this situation it also clicked with me for a situation i was i was dealing with dealing with prior because because i had this this same type type of situation with my sister with my sister growing up because because for some reason i just felt i because i was going through a situation with my sister and and i came to realize how unbelievably Selfish and entitled as she was, and 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 how much of a, a spiteful bully she was at times, and I didn't click what as to why it was, but I didn't. Um, what it was, but it was like, but it's like with these videos. Um. It all it all clicked for me. I won't go into what happened with my sister, but I will, what I will say is this: if I told you some of the stories that she did, it would make your toes cor- to- toes curl and your blood boil. And what made it even more of a kicker was when I was going through the situation, I had my sit my friend was right there by my side, supporting me, telling me ignore her, don't worry about her, keep. Just keep going. Forget about her. I know that my my friend was also what was was just as bad bad as she was. Anyway, like I said, I ended up losing the sight a few months later, and during this time, no, no, during this time, um, at New Year, my mate sent me an email saying 
Happy New Year, no hard feelings kind of thing. And I just, shot, I just rebuffed him. I shot him down. And then he turns around and starts sending me, me a nasty message again. Nasty messages again. Second time I heard from him was after I lost my my new site, and he and and he would he would um, send me um, he, would, he would again send me nasty messages, nasty remarks, calling me a screw up, calling me a, a failure, that kind of thing. And and there was also there was also basis accusations in regards to to the, the circumstances of why I lo- I lost the site. He, he, because, because, um, what, it does one, one guy who, who I also work with and he, he told him and he, and he assumes and, and he, because he saw some adult stuff on there, that's what his, he, he, he his angle was. But but I know but I, but the accusation was completely baseless because and I I know for a fact that 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 um that that his um accusation was completely baseless because quite simply it, it doesn't matter but but his accusation but the fact of the matter is that he wasn't there he and he didn't have any rights to to um. He didn't have any rights to to remark about it. Anyway, um, anyway, I moved. I lost the position. I had to go to the dedicated relief, which is pretty much I was covering when as and when I was needed. And in the end, I I decided I ended, I ended up leaving six months later because I was not I was unhappy with the position. That they that they ended up trying to fall me off on, and and ever since then. But but before that happens, he sent me this message with basic accusations and nasty remarks. Again, it was his usual mo, making fun of me for being a billy no mate. It was a, it was just a it was just so nasty and, and horrible. But this time, I didn't react in the way that he expected. I, this time, I thanked him for his um, kind words of motivation and inspiration, and I, and I, and I made, and I, and I wrote, I wrote a remark how I appreciated the fact that despite everything that's happened, that he was looking out for me. But I did it in a way where um, it was a Freudian slip, where I, I made it aware that I, I knew, I, I made it aware. That. That oh, that the only person he's thinking about in this whole in whole entire situation is himself. And then, and and then after I think it was about a week later, uh, um after like my constant watching of um narcissism videos, I decided enough was enough. And I needed to go no contact. So, I blocked him from. From email, I blocked his number. I blocked his, his social media um, connections. I just, I just, I just, call, I just quite simply cut him off. And th- this happened. This happened in I think it was Easter twenty nineteen. I had a couple of jobs. I left the job, and I had a couple of jobs after that, and then the, then then the lockdown hit. And then, and then, and then during this lockdown, during the COVID lockdown, I did go shopping a, um, a number of times. And there was one time where I actually saw him um, in, in the local town. And I saw him coming out of a local train station. And I, I was on the bus on the way home. I don't think he saw me, but I'd say he did look, look, look um, relatively um, troubled shall we say and um that was the last time i ever saw him that was two years ago but but even though this happens um that wasn't the end because one of the things that that i i went through after the said the this the experience was the biggest thing was for me rumination 
and it was like I kept going through all the situations that took place and and it was like it I, I just felt like it was going through my mind again and again and again and again and I was like I wish I just had the strength to stand up to him I wish I had the I wish I had the words and I wish I had, there were things I could could have done done differently I guess it, I guess it was survivor's guilt I guess because it was like I just if only after everything that I'm currently I am I learned about how to deal 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 with narcissism and that I was I was there thinking I wish I knew this a lot sooner it could have it could have saved me so much heartache and and it's like I'm I'm still in in that place. I mean, I decided I finally was able to get past the past the situation, the uh, the the experience. But at by the same time, it's like my my journey's not over yet, and I'm still having a situation. But I'm in a better place where I'm I am since I was I was in a situation. Um, and I've and I've embarked on on carrying on on this this personal development journey, and but I'm sad for him because at the end of the day, right? End of the day, right? He had everything going for him, and it's like he had everything going for him, but it was a case that. He just didn't know how to capitalize on it. He didn't know how to bring it all together. I mean, I had my issues, I had my flaws, and I had my weaknesses. But compared to him, but compared to him, I'm pretty much um. Compared to him, I'm pretty much I don't know. Give me a name of someone who 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 has it all. I'll, I'll have to think about that. But. But give me the name of someone who has it all. Who has it, has it all together. Because I'm that guy. Especially compared to him. Um. I don't know what to say. Um. I'm sad for the situation because I wish I, I wish I was having a situation because it was like we were friends for over 12 years and and over over something so completely minor he just f flushed our friendship down the toilet just like that but that's okay because I came to realize that in life, when you put certain elements under pressure, you 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 ultimately see its true value. With sand, you can make the most beautiful shards of glass, or beautiful most beautiful glass sculptures. With rock, when you put rock under heat and pressure, you know what comes from rock rock when you put pressure on it, diamonds. With people on the other hand, you you truly see the, the the true value when you put when 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 put under pressure. They'll either they'll either rise to the occasion, or they will or, or they'll fold like a bad game of poker. And my my can't see my mate can't see folded. I mean, and they that's how it goes. Well, I give up. I mean, I can understand that, but one thing I can't understand, that, though, is, is narcissism. Why is control so important? I mean, I mean, when when you're unhappy in your own life, right? You're, you're so unhappy in your own life that you have to bring other people down. But I mean, I, but why? 
why why is why is it why why is it the case that you have to bring other people down when you could when when, when it could have been be a lot more fruitful to just build yourself up learn to love and accept yourself and this is something that I've struggled to do in my life but I'm learning to do that now this is one of the many things that I have I'm starting to learn to do in my person on, on this journey that I'm on and I'm in a place where I feel that I'm, I feel, I feel great. For the first time in my life, I feel great. And as far as our friendship is concerned, I look back now on, on me, me and my friend's friendship. And I can honestly say that our friendship had only ever worked when I felt bad about myself. But as soon as I started making making moves to improve myself, and then all of a sudden he he wants to have a problem with that. Like he's the he's a positive like he's negative. Was it the positive positive police? Whereas like you're saying, oh, you can't do that. Why? Because I'm just. I'm suffering because this is the way he chooses him. He he chooses to live his life, but I'm not. But if this is the way he chooses to live his life, then, then he can knock himself out. But I I I no longer wish to, be like that. I feel I'm not, I feel I'm in a place where I'm finally on the up and up, and I'm making things happen in my life, and and I feel, happy and positive about that, and I know that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it. I mean, um, I mean, I mean, I'm, I just start, I just, I just, um, I just recently became forty now, and it's like, um, and I was when I knew I was about to become forty, I was, I was freaking out, but I know that I have all the resources with me that I can made the whole thing whole thing happen from per, from the personal development stuff to the workout stuff i've got i feel like i've had it all together and i feel great and 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 i'm, I'm and i feel that i'm only getting better i mean i have a phrase i use to to describe the journey the journey that i'm on and the phrase is 2.0 i'm i'm at 2.0 and i'm and i'm only and i'm only get and i'm only getting started and i mean i don't have any i mean i'm not i'm not trying to say, say I, mean, I don't have any friends but i'm hoping one day that i can i can find that support network who is going to do be that driving force to make this whole make this whole dream happen and we'll see so um i guess that's it um i want to take this opportunity to thank you for listening to me and for for working on the story with me and um and i and my advice to you is um don't ever think that it's too late to live li, li, to set to reach for the stars and and search for your dreams because yeah uh, unfortunately you're going to encounter, encounter people and they're usually people that are close to you who are going to attempt to drag you down for whatever reason it may be but as long as you feel it within yourself that you can make it happen that's the most important thing and if these people are not are not going to support you and believe in you and be a driving force to make it happen. You don't need them. They they they, they gotta go. Whether that be family members, whether it be your partner, whether that be whoever it is who your friends who who won't believe in your your vision and your dreams. If they if they can't believe in your vision and dreams, they gotta go. Simple as that. They gotta go simple as that. And this is this is um kind of what I wanted to do.
do that from now on I, I want to be meet when I meet new people I'm I have I I have now a one because of everything that I've been through in regards to narcissism and that I have a one strike rule from now on which is that if you if I meet you and we we kick we we um what's it called if you if you undermine me or put me down I you get a warning you you get one warning. You do it again, you're done. It's as simple as that. This is my, that's my um, that's my my um. I guess uh, I guess you can say that's my boundary, I suppose. Because I have lived most of my life surrounded by people who who treated me like crap, and now I have very low tolerance. To, I have very low tolerance for that. So anyway, like I said, um, I suppose that's it. So like I said, thank you for listening to my story and um and i wish you everyone the best of luck on your on your journey beyond uh, n- narcissism so um thank you take care